Hello, we have found out how to prepare for an interview. We have also looked at what kind of questions to prepare. We have looked at the importance of uh, preparing for an interview, but the ultimate question is how do you put across all this preparation, all the things th that you want to tell your interviewer to the way you speak because interviewing is as much about behavior as about using the right words and the right language to get your message across. In this course and in these lectures, I have been focusing more on how to speak rather than on the behavioral aspects, even though we cannot really separate the behavioral from the linguistic when whether we are looking at interviews or presentations or meetings. So, we have tried to do them together. Now, let us move on to we have been looking at the languages, a language of meetings, language of presentations and now it is high time we moved on to how do you, what kind of language do you use, how do you speak up in an interview. Uh, Please remember that companies want job candidates who are well spoken and articulate and recruiters won't represent a job con candidate if they don't match the client's profile. And the best people who are highly sought after are those who are succinct in the explanation of their work experience. So uh, what are the things that create a problem in interviews? So, Diane D. Resta, who is the author of Knockout Presentations, How to Deliver Your Message with Power, Punch and Pizzazz, and the president of D. Resta Communications, a New York City speech coaching and training firm, uh, lists six things you should not do in an interview when you are speaking in an interview. The first one is using non-words. Many of us, we talked about non-words, by now you know what are non-words and you all know your favorite non-words by now. Uh, the non-words, uh, we, whenever we are nervous, remember, we tend to use non-words more often. So you must find out your non-words and stop using non-words. The second thing she lists is up talk. Uh, what is up talk? When you are trying to project yourself as something uh, very uh, extraordinary, you are overconfident, that is the other extreme to which you can go. Now, the most common problem when we are normally when we look when one trains people for interviewing skills, one does not look at these issues. However, when one is speaking to learners whose language whose first language is not English, one has to spend the same amount of time looking at one's language. And I have myself found out that all the confidence in if I may see so cockiness that I see in interviewees these days, it goes for a six when the moment they start speaking because many of them have memorized their answers to the questions, but they do not have the basic language skills. They make very stupid, very basic errors, grammatical errors. Nobody is going to give you marks for gr grammar, but it creates a certain profile of you. Like if a company is looking for an articulate person and your language is full of grammatical mistakes, that's the not, that's not the person you're looking for unless you're going for a completely technical job. Uh, related to that is sloppy speech. You might be very fluent, you might use speak correct English, but you are careless in the way you speak, use language. That is sloppily. You are not careful about how you use words, not careful about the way you use language. That is another turn off. The fifth turn off according to her is speed talking. What is speed talking? Now, in, in interviews in particular, when we are under stress and we know that so much is at stake, we tend to, instead of condensing information, we try to pack in 
a lot of information. We have a lot to say, and we know that interviewers are not going to give us all the time in the world. So we try to condense all the information is in the minimum time, as, as little time as possible. The result is that you talk very fast. You're doing speed talking. Now, yes, you sound very fluent and very articulate. And uh, you've, got, you've said what you want to, wanted to say. But the interviewer hasn't really understood what you were trying to say. So they're trying to follow the details. They're trying to see what you're saying. So please don't indulge in speed talking. The last point is, according to her, weak speaking. What is weak speaking when you don't use the appropriate words? You don't have, either you don't have the vocabulary, the right vocabulary, vocabulary or you don't uh, find the right words because you're nervous. So you tend to use terms, verbs, adjectives, which are very weak and which, are, which take longer to say the same thing. So that's called weak speaking. Uh, now we look at how you can get rid of these habits. First of all, uh, become aware of your habits, whether it's the use of non-words. Jane Letts is talking about non-words, but it applies to all your linguistic skills, whether it's uh, non-words or grammar or weak words or whatever. You must first, the first stage is to become aware, and you can do that by recording your speech. Not uh, memorized speeches, not rehearsed speeches, but the way you normally speak. Because you're not going to rehearse the uh, exact answers. You're going to respond to the questions you are asked. So you need to, you need to do this as a habit. Good language skills, error-free language, should become second nature to you. Because when you are under pressure, you will make more mistakes. So you must first become aware of your own speech habits, the mistakes you make by recording yourself. The second thing is to rec recognize the patterns. What kind of non-words do you use? Wh uh, what kind of grammatical mistakes do you make? What pronunciation problems you have? So once you become aware of them, and once you recognize your patterns, maybe you can't overnight improve everything, but at least you can watch out for that. So whenever you think you are, you anticipate that you're about to use a filler word, you're about to make a you know, uh, pronunciation mistake, you can pause. It's all right to pause. We think, as I said earlier, we think that pausing is, creates an unfavorable impression in the listener's mind. Not really. The listener knows that you're thinking. So you may pause as you're waiting for the right word to come to you. Now we're going to look at three things. Uh, first, the reason why many of us who are good speakers, who are extremely articulate in our day-to-day -day conversations, we speak very confidently, we speak very fluently, we speak without errors, such people also tend to make mistakes when they are at interviews. They probably are not able to give their best. Uh, they trip for words. They stammer and stutter. They can't, uh, they repeat. They're not able to find a strong word to say what they are saying. And the root of the problem is nervousness. We've talked about nervousness in different situations, in meetings, in presentations. But this is one situation where nervousness can be the absolutely clinching factor. And this is a situation where you're bound to be more nervous than in any other situation. Because unlike in presentations, unless the presentation is part of the interview itself, uh, you say, OK, I did not make a good presentation. But in this case, it's a question of whether you get the job or you don't get the job. So you are much more nervous before an interview than you are before any other speaking situation. So what are the things that you can do to stop feeling nervous? Uh, these are tips which experts have shared with us. Uh, you can find the, these lists anywhere. But they've been given by people who are coaches, professional coaches, trainers, 
people who work in the area of communication and have compiled that list to see what are the things you can do because each of us does different things and we have to find out what works for us. Uh, somebody recommends positive self-talk that I can do this, I am capable, I am going to get this talk, job. So that kind of positive self-talk in several cases, I am the best, I know I can do it, I have been called for this interview because I went through the screening test and obviously the recruiters have found some good qualities in me. So think positive, do positive self-talking, I can do it, I can make it to the interview. The second thing which we have been harping on time and again is right breathing and once again the expert tells us breathe slowly, breathe slowly 10 times just before you face the interview and see if it might makes any difference to you the right kind of breathing and breathing slowly does it relax you does it make you feel less tense along with breathing as we did in presentation release your muscle tension remember when we are tense we tend to tense up our shoulder muscles our neck muscles our facial muscles and any tensing of the mes muscles irrespective of where hands uh, limbs feet so the moment uh, we tense our muscles the first impact is that the body language that we use is not very open the second impact is that um, our voice itself is not very uh, clear that it seems construct constricted it we our voice doesn't sound right if our muscles are tense so relax your muscles as we just as we did in before the presentations uh, do some neck rolls do some shoulder rolls uh, clench your fists open your fists take all the tension out of your fists your feet your uh, face relax your facial muscles and more important visualize success so fighting your nerves as in the case of presentations was half of it was your psychological part how can you get over your fears through some positive thinking and the second part is physiological which is how to deal with the problems you have so more important is the talking to yourself the, your thinking so the moment you start visualizing your success that I'm going to get this job I am made for this job I'm going to get this start visualizing it uh, mind you many times you might not get the job but it's important that you come out looking I gave my best and the interview leave the interviewers also irrespective of whether they are in a you know whether you are you are the person they found the best for the job or not you left a very favorable impression on them so visualize success it happens that for a number of reasons interviewers are not able to offer you the job but they say well so and so was very impressive and maybe in the next round or if there's a vacancy turning up or if the same interviewer shows up in another interview he is bound to remember you release by writing that is another thing you can do releasing by writing is not just uh, means two things one is write down what you're feeling and deal with your fears the other is prepare your responses I often do it myself when I'm facing uh, an interview or a situation where something is very important I try to compose my thoughts and put down my thoughts in writing that this is if I'm asked this question I'm going to put this in writing I'm going to say this or how does this sound even better some it's even nice better if you can record yourself I often do it before an important uh, presentation I record myself and uh, listen to myself to see how do I sound how what is the impression I give when I speak is it acceptable and even later uh, many times we do a review of how we appeared I if I uh, if I repeat that behavior in the interview I have a very objective kind of uh, 
record of how what I said, what I said wrong, and how I could have improved on it. So maybe on that, not in that particular time, but the next time I can work on it. There's nothing like physical activity to release your tension. So do whatever works for you. Take a leisurely walk. You can obviously do pull-ups and push-ups, but you could take or you could walk around, you could do anything. Uh, physical movement, physical activity, which takes away your tension. Don't have an don't have a heavy meal before your interview. Because eat light, because uh, who knows what you eat might interfere with uh, your metabolism, your uh, stomach, or it might even interfere with your. Uh, you might feel sleepy. So eat light and hydrate. Drink lots of water. Uh, because when we are nervous, we tend to, our mouth goes dry, and if we feel thirsty, we dry up. We're not able to speak. Our voice sounds very hoarse. Avoid coffee. Uh, we tend to drink coffee before we go in for anything important. But they say that coffee is the worst thing because it really uh, makes you jittery. It doesn't soothe your nerves. So don't drink coffee before you go. But you could chew gum. Yes, don't chew gum in the interview room, but before you go for an interview, uh, again, studies have shown that chewing gum can release tension. And finally, smile. There's nothing like a smile to make you feel better. Uh, Robin Kermode, who is the author of Speak So Your Audience Will Listen, Seven Steps to Confident and Successful Public Speaking, came out with a very crazy idea about how to get over your nerves in an article in The Guardian. What does he say? He says that you can do anything from stopping yourself shaking. So doing crazy things like uh, tensing and uh, relaxing your uh, leg muscles, your uh, hip muscles, do anything. Uh, stop your voice from shaking. What do you do to stop your voice from sh shaking? What does he suggest? He suggests that you you try to recite a stupid uh, poem or a nursery rhyme like Humpty Dumpty slowly to yourself, so that that will help your voice from shaking. Stand up while you wait. Normally, when we are called for an interview, we are asked to take a seat. But what he suggests is avoid taking a seat, because you will have to rise to your feet. Instead of that, he says that if you stand, you will be at level with the interviewers. So. When you are asked to sit inside, find your best sitting position in the interview room. Don't lean too much against the seat. Uh, st uh, we, we'll show you the right sitting positions in the video that follows. How do you sit in an inter in interview for the best effect? How to let not only to appear confident, so that you find your best voice. Show your hands. Now, our tension manifests not only in our face, in our neck, in our uh, shoulders, but mostly in our hands. So people who are tense tend to clench their fists. They find something to do with their hands. They hold on to their hands. And that's a big giveaway for the interviewer, that this person is nervous. So, And also, your body language doesn't appear open. So always show your hands. And it also allows you to gesture when you are speaking to people. Remember to make the other pe person speak special. Usually, we have the tendency, because we are told that we have to get the best impression, give the best impression about ourselves, we tend to highlight our own achievements. So we try, tend to, some of us tend to tom tom uh, about our achievements and make ourselves seem very important. But instead, you make the other person feel special by a single word or by the way you address them. Make them feel, by, by using a you tone, you make them feel that they are more important, not you. But the most important thing is to listen. You have to listen. Body language of the interviewer is important, as important as the body language of the interviewee. And if you're clever, if you're smart, you know how to read the body language of the interviewers. Now, interviewers are very clever people. They try not to betray any sign of whether they like you or not through their 
facial expression or by telling you. But if you are sensitive and you are attentive to their body language uh, or when you are nervous, one, one of the things you can do is you can listen to them, observe them and that will get, get, help you get over your own nervousness. I had this image of, uh, of an interview, I appeared in and yes, I did not get the job, but that body language uh, remains with me to this date. Uh, there was a lady who was the subject expert who had a frown on the moment I entered the room she had a frown on her face and the second person had a big smile and uh, much later I came to know that this lady did not I mean she, she was not in favor of giving me the job so that I could read from her expression the moment I entered the room from the annoyed face or the body uh, her uh, you know, frown on her face, uh, f f I could make out that she is not favorably inclined towards me. So, use your own voice. Uh, do not try to make a use a fake voice when you are in an interview. A lot of people do that. They tend to uh, adopt an interview voice. I recall um, interviewing a number of IIM students way back and um, I was uh, amused that a lot of the students uh, who came, they came with such packed speeches. You ask them a question and there they were with their speeches in a perfect flawless delivery. Almost like, uh, you know, the feeling I got was like those uh, Miss India contestants when they win the crown or when they are being interviewed, they make up these speeches about how they all want to be Mother Teresa's. So that was the kind of speeches they came up with. And uh, I was not sure that is, uh, I, I got the feeling that it was a very artificial way of speaking, but I said, okay, wow, this I am students speak very well. But then I had an opportunity to interact with the students outside the class and they spoke in a very different way. So that feeling that there was something not quite right about the way they were speaking, it was because they had faked an accent. Be yourself, do not don't try to be anyone else. Remember all these things we are sharing in these lectures with you. Just remember the ultimate thing is be yourself. Always the, the people who stand out are always those who take the gamble and who always break the rules. So you need to know all the rules, only then you will be able to break the rules if you wish to. So you know if you are writing we uh, uh, what 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 is a writer supposed to do today all the writers want to start writing without reading but all the old classic writers that we know of they read up everything possible under the sun they read up all the writers from the beginning of uh, the history of their literature before they started writing their own novels or their own poetry or their own plays but so uh, now how, how does the writer stand out from another writer? Because if you they begin by imitating other writers, by trying to write like somebody else. But as they find, find their own voice, they stop imitating. Then they do something different. And they can do this something different only because they know the rules. So only if you know the rules can you break the rules. Now I come to the second part of speaking in an interview, a very ignored part. Uh, we tend to, f uh, when we are preparing for interviews, we tend to focus on important questions. And these days you have these uh, quick guides on how to answer standard questions, the 10 important questions or the 20 important questions in an interview and we all rehearse them. So when I listen to these answers, I get a very strange feeling because I feel that they are rehearsed and indeed they are rehearsed. But what happens if an interviewer asks you a question which is out of the box, which is not one of the standard questions? That is where your real uh, fluency, your real communication skills show up. That is where your we ca people come to know whether you really articulate or, uh, you, uh, or you have just memorized these questions as students tend to do these days. So the first thing 
which is which connects with the point I made earlier that remember interviewers are also human beings. The idea is not to make you scared and to make you feel nervous. The whole idea is to help you. It is like a it is helping you to uh, answer the questions in the best possible way by helping you to get over your nervousness. So, what do the interviewers do? What, what do they do in order to make you feel less nervous? They indulge in what is called small talk and I myself do it. Whenever I notice a young person in particular is very nervous, I try to make some small talk with them so that they can get over their nervousness. So, uh, researchers led by Brian Swid, uh, Switer at Scheller's College of Business at the Georgia Institute of Technology have examined mock interviews with 163 undergrads and they published the result in British Psychological Society Research Digest. They, in this they suggest that the impression you make during those first minutes of seemingly idle chit chat what researchers call rapport building has a big influence on your interviewer's overall perception of you and this is corroborated. corroborated. I, can, I can second this. This is I myself have observed this. It is a small talk in which one forms an impression about the candidate. So, what are the steps to small talk? The first step to making small talk is stay, stick to safe small topics, the weather, sports or how bad the traffic is. Step 2 is do not over praise. So, usually uh, people interviewers would ask you a question like suppose you have travelled a long way and they, they ask you how was your journey, did you, did you have a problem finding the place. So, they would ask you a very simple question and um, what do you do, what are you supposed to do in that small talk. Now, do not, it is not a cue. It is not a cue for you to uh, the, remember the interviewer is just trying to find out, ha, help you relax and just trying to find out something little bit about you. So, may, maybe where you live or how far do you live. Now, that is not the time to tell you how you got uh, to tell the interviewer how you got caught in the traffic jam and how it took you 2 hours to get there. There is no need to do that. So, there are some topics which interviewers usually use. Uh, safe topics like the weather, sports, traffic and so on. Whenever you ask a, a question like that, understand that the interviewer is trying to make you feel relaxed and use these to, to relax. In fact, use it to relax. I recall being asked in an interview being I had put a German on my CV as one of the languages I speak or I have uh, I have uh, cleared some, I have got some certificates in German language. Now, the first question, the, the, the rela uh, small talk question which was put to me by the person who was chairing the panel was Zetzen Sie sich bitte. Now, uh, now, what did it tell me uh, with a smile? Now, I understood that he is trying to make me feel comfortable by asking me this simple question. But I also understood that he is trying to test whether I remember my German or I have forgotten it. So, uh, I am not supposed to start a conversation in German, but just respond in German. That is enough for the person to, uh, to, uh, to be convinced that you do recall your German, you do remember your German and also it gives me time to, it makes me relax because it is a chairperson himself who is asking me. Step 2 is do not overpraise. Uh, this does not happen in panel interviews, but in one to one interviews very often uh, we can make small talk by asking, uh, by making a comment as an icebreaker by saying oh your room is lovely or uh, that is a nice picture on the wall. So, we can make, uh, we, we, we can use questions like, we can use starters like this. Step 3 jump on any comment made by the same party. So, the moment you say oh I am from such and such college, uh, the, the interviewer sees it on your CV and says he went to the same college that you did or if he mentions that you have some common interests, 
Now, you can take it into a very short conversation, but does not mean that you carry on a parallel conversation with this particular interviewer, because he has been in the same college with you. He is he or she is doing it just to make you feel comfortable. Make sure you look interested, even if the topics discussed are not interesting. 5, step 5 is avoid bringing, bringing up anything related to the job itself. Now, uh, this is the time, uh, the whole, it's like every bu business meeting, every business conversation must ideally, whether it's a meeting, whether it's a presentation, uh, it must devote a little part of the, the first few minutes to social conversation, to what is called small talk. And the idea is to break the ice, to strike a rapport. But, uh, and this is obviously not the time to start talking business. Do not bring up any issue related to the job itself. So, in again, in small talk, listen for key keywords, stay positive, show some interest in the interviewer, look for conversational cues, be very observant as to your uh, surroundings in an interview situation, because the interviewer, interview setting will likely offer some ideas for light, easy conversation. Bring the small talk and before you before uh, you end a small talk, the interview is wrapping up and you are both saying goodbye. Circle back to the very beginning of the interview and riff off the initial night banter between you two. Like somebody says, oh, I go to the same sports club as you. So, you could say, well, let us meet in the club or, you know, uh, uh, let us, uh, I am looking forward to the next match or whatever. So, you can also bring the small talk full circle. Now, I am quickly going to go through what kind of phrases you can use in business English. In small talk, I would not have time to go into all of them, but let us look at some sample ones. So, suppose you are talking about the weather. You could say, it is a bit cold this time of the year, is not it? It is a bit warm for this time of the year. How about this weather? Beautiful day, is not it? How is the weather in the city when you left? So, you ask questions of this kind. It looks like it is going to snow, lovely weather, is not it? Uh, now, when you are looking at how to speak effectively in an interview, uh, you do not need to memorize grammar drills. You do not have to practice grammar just before the interview. That is something which should become natural to you and that is a long term plan. If you have poor grammar, you must do it well before. You must, you must peg up your uh, grammar skills in general. Do not study grammar too much learn and study phrases instead. Uh, and reading is listening is not enough. How do you have, how do you build a vocabulary? Now, I find students building a vocabulary by looking at lists, memorizing the lists and looking up the answers. Those lists are helpful in helping you answer the uh, verbal questions in the exam. Or um, many of us read a lot we listen to others, but we are shy when it comes to using our using words. So, many of us have a very extensive passive vocabulary that is because we have been reading, we have been listening to others, but when we are asked to speak, our vocabulary is very limited because we have not put it to use. So, whenever you come across a new word, whenever you read something, whenever you hear something, Try to use those words. Use a very simple trick which one of my students followed and had a wonderful vocabulary, active vocabulary by the end of the course. Come across, if you come across five new words in writing, make a list. Make a list of five new words in writing and five new words in, listen, in speak, listening or speaking. Now, try to find out the meanings of these words and more important, use these words use these words like children do. Whenever children learn any new word, they are so fascinated by the word that you will find them using that word throughout the day. And this is the way they never forget the word. So, use the words. Submerge yourself. How do you submerge yourself? Most of us think that improving our communication skills or appearing confident in uh, formal situations is something we pull on and pull off. And that is why we do not relate it to our everyday life. So, 
what the way when when we said you must come across as yourself as you what do you need to do that you is not different from the you which you are normally it's a you which is the same throughout and to be that you who is confident, who is articulate, who, is, who, who has a good vocabulary, you need to submerge yourself. You must hang out with people who have a good vocabulary, who have a very good speaking skills. And mind you, you will find your, your own vocabulary, your own language improving miraculously if you just listen to them and repeat, uh, use their language, listen carefully and actively repeat, use the same kind of language in your own conversation. Mind you, this happens to me the moment I'm with a group which is articulate, my own speech habits change because uh, unconsciously I'm listening to them, I'm also mirroring them. So do that. Study correct material. You must also, uh, uh, in order to build your uh, language and your vocabulary, you must read a lot. You must uh, do uh, read the best writers. Uh, you can read serious literature. You can re read classics, or you can even read uh, nonfiction, or you can read uh, motivational books. But do make reading a part of your everyday life. Now, I'm going to run through some of these phrases quickly for the typical questions you get. But I won't have time to go into all the questions. So what are the phrases? Think of some of the phrases you can use for describing yourself. I was born and raised in. I attended the university. I've just graduated from. I've worked for. I've worked for. I enjoy playing. So uh, tell me about yourself. The first question, what are the phrases you can use? I attended MIT. I grew up in Korea. I'm an easygoing person. I'm a hard worker. I've always liked being balanced. And uh, how do you talk about your strengths? I have always been a great team player. I believe my strongest trait is, I realized my strength is, I play close attention to, I am an excellent, I am a troubleshooter, I am good at, I am good at, I am self-motivated, I have very good. And what are your strengths? My, my, I believe my strongest trait is my attention to detail. I've always been a great team player. Okay, So this is the way you can answer. Use phrases, the kind of phrases to be able to answer questions. Expressions for talking about your weaknesses. I feel my English ability is my weakest trait. I always try to solve my own problems. I'm overzealous. I become nervous. I tend to spend too much time. Sometimes I have trouble delegating duties. So. This might be bad, but in college I found I procrastinated a lot. I feel my weakness is not really detail oriented enough. I feel my English ability is my weakest trait, the weakest trait I struggle with. So you can use these phrases to talk about your weaknesses. What about what kind of position are you looking for? I'm looking for a position in which I can. I am interested in. I'm more interested in. I'm more interested in. I want to take on more responsibility. Uh, I'm convinced that the name of the firm, I want to further my career, I am impressed. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Uh, five years from now, I'd like to see myself in a management position. Uh, five years from now, I want to be a senior sales manager. So what extracurricular activities do you are you involved in? I was involved in. I was very active in. Besides studying, I played. I was involved with a group. So you must pay attention to these uh, details. Uh, like when you ask, why should the company hire you? You should say, you should hire me because I'm confident. There are two reasons I should be hired. I'm a perfect fit for this job. I should be hired. I think I'm, great, I'm a great match for this position. So uh, we've looked at three things uh, when talking focusing on, on speaking, specifically sp focusing on speaking in this lecture, we looked at three aspects. One was the first part of speaking is get over your fears. Second part is how to use small talk to relax, because the small talk also gives away a lot about you to uh, interviewers. And the third part is how to use phrases in to ask particular kinds of questions. In the role plays we have for you, you will watch all these 
the things it at work and we'll ask you to analyze how the people who played those roles to to what extent they were successful in using these phrases or maintaining the right body language or using small talk if there was any thank you <laughs>